What are these artists up to? Uh, okay, I think we're live now. So, hey everybody, it's Ben here from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios, and welcome to Cinderblock Studios epi Live Episode 2. This is How to Fail Like an Artist. Uh, this will not be, though, a comprehensive guide and step-by-step -step on how to fail. This is more of a general thing. It's like, hey, we all fail, but we all need to move on. Yes. So, for those of you who don't know who I am, I am Ben Yockel. I'm a visual, visual artist uh, living and working in Western PA, and I make YouTube videos. This is my channel. Hi. Hey. I should I should wave I should wave hi, and I am joined this evening by Lucas, who joined us last week. I should I keep saying us like there's more than the, to the two of us here. Legion, uh, <laughs> who is another YouTube artist, and if you would like to say something about yourself, I guess. Um, I support the merger of not only North and South Dakota, but North and South, uh, the two states, because that's just a waste of time to them both of them. There should just be one Dakota and one. Or the state that I don't care about. Okay. And when I was 12, I destroyed a tree in my backyard with a piece of construction equipment. Really? I actually did. <laughs> oh, that wasn't a, a, a made-up crap. I actually just recently found a picture. It's, it's, me, it's me in a backhoe. And it's an old Polaroid. Oh. The ones, the ones you took the picture and it popped out and you shook to get the thing up to the, yeah. I think it's upstairs now because it was, it was down here for a long time shoved in a box. But I might have to go get it before the end of the night. <laughs> you have to. Um, so. Dinner, I must see it. <laughs> Probably should have thought that one through before saying it. But if the intros here have been... Any constellation, uh, we fail as artists. Yes. Um, we don't do well most of the time. <laughs> and I'm, I hate to, to break anyone's heart if they happen to think that artists are perfect creatures who only make masterpieces and nothing else, because that is entirely untrue. Okay, just let me grab my shameful drawings because there's a lot of them in my sketchbook. Where it's like, oh goody! I, I I flipped through my one from last year. I'm like, I gotta pull out a couple that are that are bad. They bring um, shame. To, they bring shame to me. Shit! I just said shit on the internet. Fuck. Oh. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was classic. <laughs> I think I'm just the first person to drop the F-bomb on your show ever. No, I think that was me. <laughs> We're supposed to be family-friendly. Are we? Since when? No, because I'm having a drink tonight, so... <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, right, so I'm futzing around with uh, a new setup. Um, so forgive me if I'm off camera and working, but I am working on, sort of working on this uh, tonight. Uh, also making sure that I'm trying to keep my uh, comments monitored, mon monitored. <laughs> Minotaur. I'm notoriously bad at that. So. Okay, I'm just looking through, I'm looking for the crap stuff that I try doing. Okay. All the crap. Leaf through the crap. Oh, fun Crappy, fact. Crap, crap, crap. Um, yes. I was reading. I was reading this book today, and like, um, there are these two, I guess, English guys, and they were putting a prank on American by saying that, saying that there was shit in a house that looked haunted. He was like, "There's got to be nothing in it." He's like, "No, there's shit." And then like, he opens the door. There's nothing but sheep feces everywhere. So. Oh, that's. Accurate. Pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. So, on to today's topic. <laughs> if I can recover from that, I don't know. No, you can't. Very uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's hard in your mind. Topic, though. So, topic, yes. Probably won't be as long as last week. Um, I probably could have thought up more stuff to talk about, but hey, one more reason to call this a failure. <laughs> so, what was I going to say? I don't know. 
Let's see, I, I was smart though. I wrote it down like I did last week. Yay! Uh, so, how do you fail like an artist? What does that mean? What does it mean to fail like an artist? Uh, well, as I was saying before, uh, we all fail. That's how we and uh, and we all not just uh, fail, but uh, politely we fail miserably. Uh, we fall on our face. <coughs> we make some really bad art and bad drawings. And the reason we do this, not necessarily on purpose, I mean we're trying, but we fail because that's how we learn. And we do it not just because of art, but because of you know whatever we do. If you're training to be a doctor or a rocket scientist, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. I don't know why I brought up doctor and rocket scientist, like the cliche, but you know. Before we continue on, I would like to bring up that there's no such thing as a mistake, only happy accidents. There is something in my... Notes about that. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. It's a family show. <laughs> but um, anyhow, uh, one thing I did want to talk about, though, and this is sort of a tangent uh, to start out, but there is, has, or rather has been, this movement, especially in um, childhood education, that you're not allowed to tell kids that they're wrong that, or that they failed, which is... Um, see here, see here's me swearing on camera. It's bullshit. It, it is absolute bullshit to to say you're not allowed to fail. That is the dumbest, stupidest thing in the world. Because if we're not failing, we're not learning. Mhm. Mm so, my thoughts on that are: what do you mean you're not allowed to fail? I failed a few classes. I wasn't happy about it by then from it. Yeah, I've um I've even failed in college. <laughs> so have I. Ding. Um it was not a happy experience. Well not when you well not when you know you're spending money on it. <laughs> yeah, not when you're spending the government's money. <laughs> but the good thing is I don't know I don't qualify for financial aid anymore. Oh, well. Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I'm remember. I'm also remembering that I, in addition to the live show, I need to be working on a painting process video. I'm looking for bad stuff that I've drawn that I've drawn in the past few years. So. <laughs> Still. Um, I'm looking for like. It really, didn't take me long. <laughs> I'm looking for like really, really. Horrible mess ups here. I'm. I found a few that I'm like, that are like, yeah, these aren't as good, but it's not as bad as this one. I'm like torn between like which one is like awful. Like I'm ashamed of it. I want to vomit, swallow it, vomit back up and spit all over my face. <laughs> well, here's the thing: is a lot of the really bad ones. Like, do you hold on to them? Do you keep your really bad stuff, or you do you just ditch it? Um, in terms of paintings, I prime over the bad stuff because I don't want to buy a new canvas. I do that. So that's why I'm having a hard time finding some bad stuff. Uh, I, I do have it. I, ha I have my, my what was it, three places to fail? Two places to fail. fail on, uh, is, is fail in your sketchbook and fail on canvas or on the computer or on whatever your primary medium. Okay. But, I have a horrible but, painting here. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, you're welcome to go ahead if you're going to show it off. You first, you first. Um, you're going to see something important. Um, but I was going to start with, uh, you can hold on to the painting for the time being. We'll, we'll get to the, the canvas mm -hmm. failures. Um, so the first thing is fail in your sketchbook. Uh, is it, is it, is, are you somebody who just... Um, just will literally rip it out of your sketchbook, crumble it up, and throw it away, which I actually don't recommend. Or someone more like me who just flip the page and forget about it, which flip. to me is huge. Flip and, uh, the page. Like, uh, a while uh, last year, I started sketching only on sort of one side of the of the page, so I have the page, and that's all I have to look at. So when I flip it, it's gone, and I don't see it again. Well, not again, but you know. It, it's gone for, it's sort of out of sight, out of mind, which is huge. Um, and then because it's still in your sketchbook, you can maybe come back to it later, refine it, fix it if you can. 
And if not, it's there as an archive. You're like, look, I didn't, you know, it, it's not perfect. And a lot of people are actually really afraid to show show off their sketchbooks because, like, no, it's it's, it's all crap. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Because uh, they're really self-conscious about that. But um, there is a part later about showing that showing stuff off that we, you did wrong. But um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like if you're just ripping it out, um, it's not a it's not a growth because you're not sort of accepting what you've done. You're just like gone. I, I didn't I, I didn't do it, and, and that's it. But if you leave it in your sketchbook, there's you're you're both sort of flipping it away, but at the same time you're not distancing yourself. Like, you're, you're accepting your own failures, which is huge. Um, yeah. Um, I gotta agree with that. Like, I'm, I take your approach to it, too. Like, I don't rip out the pages, and for some reason, I've always been that person to draw on just one side of the paper, and I, like, in the past, a lot of my friends criticized me for wasting paper, and considering the irony of my degree now. <laughs> For those of you unfamiliar with, with, with Lucas's choice and degree, it's environmental science. Yes. Um, to you digital artists, thank you for not getting trees. And instead, wasting coal and uranium. Yeah, that stuff. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So I agree with you that it's a... Like, I'm actually not so ashamed for people seeing my bad stuff because it's like, eh, it's there, and if I can fix it, I can fix it. If I can't, then I can't. Right. And there's you know, also the idea that, especially the artists that you look up to, that you hold them in such a high regard. Like, they could never do something terrible, and they're so much better than me. It's like, they screw up just as much as you do. Yeah. Well, may, depending on professional level, maybe not just as much, but... In, in to, to a degree of, like, yeah, I, I have done some really bad stuff. And it doesn't matter how you, good you get, you will still make some really bad stuff. Yeah. On occasion. Um, yeah, like, um, I'm looking at one of the a painting that I was doing last night, and, like, it's a canvas board, so it's not like the canvas where, like, okay, it's stretched out, I can prime over it, no problem. It's a canvas board where, after so many it's times, a little it can't, harder. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I primed over it, about four times, and I was like, okay, if this doesn't work, then I'm just going to toss it out. And I've, it came so, out nice. Some of the ones that um, have gotten pretty bad for me I, are the ones that I turn into mixed media things and throw a piece of newspaper over. <laughs> um, and I'm like, hey, it's texture. <laughs> texture. And then, like, one mixed media painting, and that's it. It's fun. It is pretty fun. I wish I had more resources to do it. Elmer's glue and uh, newspaper, really. Mm. Oh, but oh, we but you, you don't get the newspaper. You probably get the online one because you're eco-friendly. Um, I wish, but like the city of my city forces the newspaper on you, so I kind of get it anyways. And the uh, most I use it for is like clipping Michael's coupons and looking at the obituaries. <laughs> wow, that's morbid. Hey, I gotta make sure so I'm not in there. Who do I know that died this week? That's that's uh, that's what people over like sixty or seventy do. They're like, oh, that person died. Went to school with them. My parents got me into the habit when I was like five. And then you see one guy that was like forty, and you just go, oh. It, this is really sad. Depressed. This is really sad. But like the frame of people that die in my seat is like between late thirties and early 80s in my city. That's the average from what I've seen. Hmm. Are people getting shot? Yeah, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> okay. It's not Detroit. All, I don't live in all, Detroit. All the, all, the, all the drug deals that are going on down there, I know. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I like how I'm just making them laugh. Like, I'm probably getting right. <laughs> well... <laughs> um, you could say that. I live in a safe part of town, though, so. Well, that's that's a good thing. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, where's <was> that? <laughs> so, uh, one thing that I've learned, and I brought this up in uh, 
a video recently. I would say the past six months. I don't know exactly when. About how I only sketch in pen. And I started doing that a number of years ago. And a lot of people have this weird aversion to pens. Because like, oh my god, I'm so like in love with my eraser and I could never give up this thing. And it's like, that's that's a problem. <laughs> okay. I agree. Um, I used to draw a lot more in pen too, but just because like um, I had this one teacher in fifth grade that just like always criticized people whenever they brought a pen, so took class like always made sure I had a pen. And like that's, out of habit. That's very odd. Yeah, I had so like I just had a habit of like carrying pens around instead of pencils. So, like whenever I doodled in class, like it would be in pen. So like because of that I got into the habit of just drawing in pen and I used to have a bunch of pen drawings, but this one girl stole them all in um ninth grade. <laughs> Cause like I was. Oh, your precious pens. Yeah. Um, she, Don't get me wrong. I'd I'd be I'd be pretty pissed. But <laughs> I was like furious because like I had worked hard on all of them. Like she was the only friend that had a scanner at the time, so I was like, please scan these. And like she scanned them, and like she took credit for herself. So I was like just really pissed off with her for such a long time. Jeez. But the thing Some is, I got people. better. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's that's the thing about uh, drawing in pen is it actually forces you to get better. Yeah. Because if you're drawing in pencil a lot and making the same mistakes, you just erase them and uh, keep it erasing it until you get it right. But in pen, it's like, okay, this is line is on there now. You you've got to deal with it. <laughs> um, I actually didn't mind when I messed up when I drew hair in pen because like I always figured, okay, if I mess up in here, I can just ink it all in and it'll be black hair. Or I can add more waves to it, so it'll look differently. Right. And, uh, and uh, this actually brings up something because, like, I was interested the other day in like painting a certain way, and I was like, I found out that one of my favorite artists paints with ink. She painted with ink in the '90s. I don't know if she still does. I think she moved on to digital digital art. Yeah, but. Um... Ink paintings, even like like doing a thin brush with with uh, ink, really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ink actually teaches you to fail less. Really? So, so yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Um, so the more the more you use ink, the the less you will make the same mistakes twice. Hmm. I think that I I had a, there's a there's a video I've got like it's called sketching with pen only. And I think the only rating on it is a dislike. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, it actually doesn't bother me because it's probably somebody that is so used to pencil that they're like, oh, no, no, I, I could never do, you know. And I, I, will, and I will admit that it is not for everybody. It, it is not a foolproof method. I think I even said that in the video. I'm like, it's not, obviously not going to be, you know, an it probably, you probably won't be an immediate change. You won't see an immediate jump in your skills or anything. But um, yeah. it's it's one of those overtime things. Like maybe like six months later, when you look back, and you're like, "Whoa, this is like crazy and different." And, and my other thing is because pencil fades when it's in your sketchbook and you're moving oh, yeah. around and it's rubbing on the pages. But uh, especially with with my rollerball pens, is that they it's it's the same thing. It's like I I can pull out sketches from high school that look exactly the same as the stuff one I did today. Not exactly the same in terms of quality of the drawing, but uh, well, in terms of the the um, uh, contrast and, and the the level of like the, how the ink has like, the ink hasn't faded is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, um, one thing to help with that though, and I'm gonna put out a little not out oh shit, you saw my shitty. I mean, ugh. Um, this kind of helps make it stuff last longer. It's kind of a spray. Oh, I gotta flip over to your thing. Hold on a second, because I know you block out your. Oh, it's fixative, yes. Yeah. So um, you can spray some of your pencil drawings. I know last long I have this one pencil drawing, drawing that I'm actually really proud of, and I'm so glad that I sprayed. Why yeah, I, I mean, fixative is, is great, and it's good for, like, if you're at home and that kind of thing. But, yeah. Um, it, like, the thing is, like, if you're on the go with your sketchbook, and it, and it gets really annoying to spray every single 
page and then wait for it to dry. So it can be uh, a real hassle and um, sort of just quick on-the-go sketching pen is, at least in my opinion, really the way to go. And uh, I do still, I still use uh, pencil. I have a thick, heavy pencil that I'll do for quick gradients and clouds and skies uh, in my sketchbook real fast. I'm not Thanks. saying I'm not saying never pick up a pencil again. I'm just saying don't um, get out of the habit it, of it. Right, because if if you're if you stop thinking about the eraser as a, as a tool and start thinking about so start thinking about it as a necessity, you're you've got a problem. Yeah. So. Like um, really, I kind of use the eraser when I draw. Like sometimes I do a pre-drawing for watercolors, and I'll use it to kind of like erase some pencil marks because like it doesn't really look pretty with watercolor. Sounds like you need some watercolor practice. I was actually getting a lot of watercolor practice this past semester, but I do need more. But yes. You always need more excuses. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm earning a degree. <laughs> I know that's fine. I'm I'm not. Uh, when when you finish, you will have a better degree than me. So, I I yeah. applaud you for that. Thank you. Um, no, I kind of do have a degree, but um, it's because like you know how it's a, um, optional to like actually walk walk with an associates. Right. I had accidentally earned my associates last semester because I hadn't realized, oh, hey, I have my associates. I was like, oh, totally forgot about it. No, continue on. <laughs> right. That's a <laughs> I, for, I forgot I had a degree, right? But, but actually, I can't say that because I forget I have one almost constantly. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's useless. But it's still a degree. I think it varies because, like, um, if you have an associates in nursing or dental height, well, I don't know how it works right. with dental height. I, no, see, I, I don't. I don't mean an associates degree is worthless. I mean my associates degree is worthless. Oh, <laughs> my associates degree is slightly less useless. <laughs> Well, so it's part two of our topic for tonight is to fail on the canvas, which is more of a metaphor because you, I know many of you are not all working on canvas. Um, and I need to find where my mouse is at. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've already forgotten where I was at. There are two options, what I feel like when you have a canvas, um, particularly a stretch canvas. And we talked about this just a bit, a little bit ago. Uh, you can paint over it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's like wh whether you mess something up in the painting, there's always this, there was this back and forth thing I had with, with Tyler a while back that was, um, oh, just turn it into a tree. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, oh you, you messed up a spot in the sky? Put a tree there. Forget about it. Uh, cer certainly, uh, in in a painting, uh, you can always just go right over top of whatever you're doing, and it's easy to sort of forget about it that way. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you can't rectify it, and well, one, I actually recommend that you finish the piece bef before you do anything else. To finish it, just to call it done, and then paint over it. Um, the other thing you can do, and I do this with a lot of uh, my old pieces, is I unwrap them and just reuse the stretcher bars for. A new, uh, new painting. And the old one, I just roll up and shove away. And every now and then, I'll pull it back out and go, "Oh yeah, look at that!" and roll it and roll it and put it back again. Cry over it. Um, <laughs> cry in my sleep. No, um, it's just got depressing. It's just got depressing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow, no, that I was guess. that was actually all my fault, actually. Oh, Ooh. I spilled my water. I you see, water. I would have not said that. I would have said something that you would have probably blocked me over. I spill my water, and it's my water soaking broke. soaking into my sketchbook. Nice. Yeah. Okay. That is how you fail like an artist. <laughs> the good thing is he kept it family friendly because mine would have just. Oh gone. man. Well, it was it was the little one. It wasn't the big one. So. 
No, even with plus, everyone's like out of plus, it's just on the, it's just on the table and not next to all the electrical equipment. Oh. Don't want another fire in there. <laughs> another. <laughs> you assume there was one the first time. Who um. knows? <laughs> So anyhow, where, where was it? Where's, where's my at here? Um, so yeah, I talked about both things there. Fix your mistakes and uh, either paint over or end stretch. Um, there are other w ways to deal with other mediums. Um, off the top of my head, I'm sure you could sculpt around something. Um, digital. Click the undo button. I edit undo, which is... To me, it still feels like a cheat. There's something wrong with doing that in my mind, and it just maybe it's because I'm a traditionalist. I don't know. Um, but mm. so I gotta get underneath this. Uh, uh, I thought you were gonna do that thing that people do in yeah. physics class, like they just pull it out. Oh, pfft. that would not be wise on this table. <laughs> mm, it can Aside work, even. Aside from um, knocking a monitor over, I would also be knocking over a bunch of glass bottles and spilling some paint and my drink. And, okay, and yeah, you can't drink. spill the drink. <laughs> <laughs> knocking um, a few things onto the floor. Okay, crisis averted. Okay, it can actually work though if you have enough mass on it. Just saying. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Science. Bill yeah. Nye, whatever. Okay. So I need, I need another drink. I, yeah, I just spilled something. I should have another drink. So Give him a mojito. Nah, this is whiskey. Oh. <laughs> so there. <laughs> Mojitos are light. And I don't want to open my bottle of club soda right now because it will, probably won't last until Sunday. Club soda. That's not oh. soda in Texas. <laughs> well, you know, it's specifically referred to as club soda because there's baking soda in it. Well, um, not South Texas anyways. you got to go to North Texas. Is it, is, is, see, is it Coke there? <laughs> yeah, is it's it, Coke. Is it, it's, it's kind it's of funny. Everything. We have Pepsi too, but like... Um, what do, you, what, do you, what do you have? Coke. What we kind? Have, we have Coke. Coke. We have the Sam's Club <laughs> products. We have the Pepsi. And then we have the generic brands. RC, Cola. Hey, hey that's Royal Cola to you. Um, you just got to hit all the major brands so we know we're not actually endorsing anybody. <laughs> um, Maybe we're endorsing all of them. I could use some money. <laughs> Yeah, I could use money too. I've actually Just, been considering doing the Amazon affiliates thing, which I don't know if you know about that. I do not. Which basically, is you you sign up, and I don't know if you actually have to be an official business or something or not, but um, uh, basically, is you get a referral code, and whenever somebody buys anything on Amazon, if they use your referral code, uh, you get something out of it. You get like a little, basically a commission mm. compensation. Um, oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, one of the podcasts I listen to, they usually have a code for like, they give it to their audience and they can get a discount on like back to school books. Yeah, something. Because that shit's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So uh, this is actually really funny. This this whole topic for tonight actually came out with a, um, uh, came, or rather came from a. I almost spilled my water again. I gotta move this over. Um, but it it came it stemmed from a conversation I had with Didi at, on the after show last week. Um, about you know, about how you know we're all not perfect and we all make some really terrible mistakes. And I was hoping she would be here tonight uh, to kind of add a few comments in, because we got into a really good uh, topic last week on, on on that after show, and I was like, man, this should have been in the show, but Probably then she started, she started talking, and I just started like writing notes down, and I'm like, here, look, I'm taking notes for next week. Um, All the most awesome stuff happens after show. It always does. So, um, I might as well show a few of them now, a few of the 
craptastic art. This is an attempt at a combination of watercolor and acrylic. Oh, that is craptastic. <laughs> And um, this is something I was trying to do last semester when I was getting back into watercolors. Not last semester, um, last year. Um, this was craptastic pointillism with watercolors. This is just me forgetting to erase parts. Holy crap, I have, all of a sudden have ten notifications on Twitter? What the hell is going on? You've gotten famous! I, well, I, w I was poking around Dee Dee's live show... Um, or her Ustream this morning, mm -hmm. and so now I'm getting all these I'm getting all these things going at my Twitter thing from from all of her people, and it's really weird now. Mm. Speaking of Twitter, I finally reached six thousand oh, tweets man, today. This is crazy. If anyone from from Dee's uh, group is watching, hi. <laughs> this is really weird for me. I don't get n normally this many messages in a day. Um, wow. <laughs> uh, let me check all this stuff and this stuff. And oh, there's all these messages and things to people watching that I all of a sudden don't know now. <laughs> oh, I'm getting, things are coming. I'm finding. <laughs> Now you know how Flappy Bird guy feels. Oh, uh, where's this thing? And uh, this is crazy. This is really crazy. <laughs> Flappy Bird. So, if anyone is trying to forward a question, um, there you can do so on the Google Plus uh, Hangout code page thing for this if you're watching there. You can do it through the YouTube comments if you have a YouTube comment account. If you want to forward a comment through Twitter, you can do it there as well. Um, in order to help um, um, uh, confine all of our stuff uh, together, um, use the hashtag um, craptastic. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we will get to it uh, hopefully before the end of the night. I should write down that phrase. <laughs> Coined by me. Yeah, really. But that's gonna. You know what? I I can get this weird. Feeling all of a sudden, in like three weeks, it'll be trending. Craptastic. <laughs> and you're like, I came up with that. That's awesome. It's like, oh, I started a trend on Twitter. <laughs> So anyhow, we got a few questions coming in uh, through the thing already, which I wasn't paying attention to. They're already here. Um, whew, oh man, where the hell did all these things come from? It'd be funny, like they're all bots. Like, oh, try this. Okay, why? so we have I Crew Love, which I think is somebody from Dee Dee's group, <laughs> saying hi. Don't curl. Uh, don't cry over spilled milk water. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I wasn't crying. Um, we have ghost 59 -able, um, who I think is the guy that I've been talking to on DeviantArt, who is a bit of a pain in the butt, but a really uh, passionate enthusiast uh, for the arts, trying to get into himself, having some trouble. I do wish you the best. Um, uh, we have Damien Blood Fury, Furry. Damien. Damien Blood Fury. Um, not getting into that topic. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's a whole other day. Um, asking what do you, what did you do when you get a uh, art block? Uh, there was actually all all of last week's episode was on art block and and and. I don't even know what was what was last week about. I've already forgotten. We were talking about art blockets and how you like GPS uh, way to do it. Yeah, there was it was this huge. It's it's all it's all in last week's uh, live show. Stop watching our, this um, live show. Watch the next one. I just can't even keep watching us. <laughs> I think Psych was doing one tonight too, and I saw that come up. Like, oh man, that's gonna probably pull a few away. But um, 
Let's see if I have an overview of last week's things sitting in here. No, I threw it away. Oh, okay. Anyhow, so last week's episode was um, driving with a creative GPS, and it was I talked about uh, things you can do to avoid art block and to um, uh, kind of keep motivation and keep uh, uh, rhythm in, in, to some degree uh, as you're working, whether you're working in your sketchbook or or elsewhere. Um, and of course, you know, no one's perfect. No one's going to be a absolutely foolproof of this and, and work constantly. You're going to get physically tired. You're going to get hungry. You're not going to be able to work, you know, 24/7. But uh, you know, if if you can get yourself in a rhythm where, like, okay, I have to do this, then it actually becomes uh, less of a problem uh, of art block, and you surround yourself with inspiration. But it, yeah, it's all in. It's all in last week's episode. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, and it's in last week's episodes, all, uh, time coded out and everything as well. So, and skip around to your leisure. Um, leisure, beautiful word. Uh, so I gotta get some re tweet replies out this way. I can. <sighs> hey, Didi's already using the craftastic thing. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, Didi. Okay, so let me actually open that in a new tab so we can have everything. There's a, well, apparently you didn't uh, invent Craftastic. There's a few. It looks like a few others from well, then. previous. But this one is what's gonna make it right. Yes, yes, I am the one that made it extra cool, <laughs> if you can call it that. So, let me make sure this is still flowing. Uh, it's, so it's uh, carry. Carry love. I carry love. Okay. I understand now. Uh, also saying, somebody's in here is saying, you're a much better artist than me. Don't Everyone's, say that. No, nobody's, no. Chances are I'm not. <laughs> and I'm just faking it. So, Yeah. No, I don't like that perspective of oh, you're better than me. He's so much better than me. Um, yeah, it's it's not it's it's a bad mentality. To uh, actually, Mark Crilly just did a video on, on this about ju judging yourself based on other artists. And the the biggest and I, I've heard this a lot. I would say in the past uh, few months, and my thoughts on it are well, not just my thoughts. These are other people's thoughts too. But paraphrasing a bit, uh, the. Uh, See if I, I've already forgotten. <laughs> losing my train of thought. That's how my mind works. It's faster than I'm talking. You get okay, now it's complete. Now it's com now it's completely gone. I, I have no idea what I was saying. Um, um, can I just say something? Better, oh, better artist. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so like I have the same. I had the same problem with my niece when I was visiting her a few weeks ago. And, like, she was just saying how I'm never going to get as good as you. And, like, I'm trying my best not to be sarcastic with a seven-year-old. <laughs> well, mainly because, like, she's my seven. partial flesh and blood because... May not understand sarcasm? <laughs> well, I've been sarcastic, like, when I taught church classes, so... Toward seven-year-olds. <laughs> but, um, I like, I'm trying, I'm trying my best to be, like, no, don't... Like, I'm trying my best to be, like, if you're going to have that attitude, then... Fine, you'll probably keep it, but I'm just like, no, no, no. Just need to practice, and like, she's very com a very competitive little girl. Like, her room has like, um, karate belts all over it. So karate is all of a sudden competitive. Nice. But she takes it competitively. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, the the competitive um, you you could say the competitive gene, the competitive um, spirit. It's actually a little bit dangerous in the art world um, because if you are constantly measuring what you do by somebody else, then you're going to start hitting problems. Uh, and this is the thing: is it's, there's another, there's very, very quickly you can get um, little problems in your thing. Like you get some kind of mentality in your head, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm never going to be this good. I'm never going to be this good, and. Um, the thing is, you are not anybody else but you. And mm -hmm. and if it's like, that's like, and it sounds a little corny, it sounds a little cheesy. Um, 
Sounds like corn cheese. <laughs> Hashtag corn cheese. <laughs> oh, maybe next week. Um. So <laughs> maybe see, maybe that'll be the uh, the the prompt for next week for questions. Can I but, buy it? Um, but it's it, if you are like I can't be as good as you. It's like well, don't be as good as this person. Be better than that person. You know, I'm I mean, I'm inspired and I look up to a lot of uh, you know other artists as I'm sure all of us do. But if you think for even one second that I want to be like them, you've got a problem. Because it's like, it's like yes, I want to emulate their style maybe a little bit in, in my own work, or, or I want to emulate their, their processes, but don't be a copy of someone else. Because one, that's not good professionally. Like if you're looking for an art job, if you're trying to make it in the industry, and they see that you're just being like everyone else, they're going to be like, oh, well, why should we hire you? We can hire this other guy and it'll work cheaper for us. You know, Or you know, we can hire this other guy just because we like him better <laughs> or, or whatever else. But if you... It, and there's, there's, uh, there's sort of... Uh, this is a bit of a two-edged sword topic because, uh, one, there is sort of a, a gold mine of having your own unique core artistic style that you can sell and market. And that's as a as a painter, that's kind of what I do. Is I, I try and you know based off of what is uniquely me. But if you can emulate a lot of different styles, which is at least in my opinion maybe harder. But if you can deconstruct style and say I can draw like a something like Walt Disney looking, and then I can come come over here and draw something anime looking, and then I can do something uh, realistic and do something uh, sort of Art Deco stylized all in like the same afternoon and just switch, 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 then you are more marketable. Mm -hmm. But I think it's significantly harder to be that artist. Uh, it, maybe I'm just biased because I'm so much more singular. There is a lot of it's like you need to be yourself and, and stand out as yourself. But you also, in some ways, need to be versatile without surrendering what is truly you, you, and uniquely yours. Yeah, like um, I think I can't remember his name right now, but I know one of the guys that's kind of a regular on your show. Very deep voice for sixteen year old. I really don't know his name. Oh, that's True Jenny Code. Who is that guy? Has another name that I don't remember right now. Like um, I remember one night you were kind of talking to him. Like he really wanted a specific style, like anime related, and like um. I think it's just one of those nights where I was having technical difficulties, and I really wanted to like talk to him. I was like, "No, no, 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 no! You don't want that. You don't want that." <laughs> and because um, like I kind of went through the same thing of high school, like trying to imitate a certain art style. And first, it's like a really huge pain in the butt to do. Yes. And like second, it's you're not gonna be happy with yourself. Well, maybe you'll be happy with yourself. But it's like. <laughs> You're not producing something. It's, it's not. It's not as fulfilling. Yeah, there you go. It's like, it's like, oh, I just copied this person. Great. Right. Uh, one of the good We're, things is, because like right after I got out of high school, I stopped doing the whole anime thing. I started concentrating more on realism. Mm -hmm. And um, that's smart. Yeah, concentrate on realism, kids. Forget anime. <laughs> and um, I eventually started doing stuff like this. Oh, uh, they look. Uh, it doesn't look so great because I'm using an iPad camera, but yeah. Right. But like um. But you're starting to grab proportions a little more, and you got the. Yeah. Yeah. And like um, actually, here's a really good one that I did a few about two months ago. Did Did you say of me? No, 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 not of you. Okay. Or me. A little um, afraid <laughs> there. No, my friend that that is based on got really PO'd at that. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't look like you at all, does it? You know? Here's a really good one. Um, if you can um, recognize this person, hashtag her name or her character's name. Oh, see, now, see, now you're thinking character, and that doesn't help me at all. Well, um, she's a character on a live-action TV show. I could... You know. <laughs> 
probably I, I don't I don't watch much actual TV, so. Okay, well, she's on a British TV show, so that should narrow it down a lot. Oh, what's well for knowing you, it's got to be Doctor Who. No, 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 it's not Doctor Who. Oh, wow! I'm Plot surprised. twist. <laughs> It is a science fiction show, though, so that's pretty close. Uh, that doesn't help me anymore. I, the only the only British sci-fi that I know is Doctor Who, and that's and that's loosely saying that I know it. So, well, there's also Red Dwarf, but I haven't really gotten into that. Go ahead, give it away. I'm not gonna guess. Um, she is Gwen Cooper from the Doctor Who spin-off Torchwood. Well, it's still. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Liar. Mm. Anyhow, so as long as you're showing off some some, uh, some craptastic drawings, uh, I, those I guess craptastic. To, I guess. Oh well, you know what I mean. Yeah. We were showing off drawings, and and I made it a point to pick out a few that were in my sketchbook craptastic. Right, now this is last year's sketchbook. This one ran from. Uh, let me set my painting aside for the time being. I can probably close this out. I actually probably won't work on this for the rest of the night, but I do have other projects to do. Um, so, let me get my sketch. So, this is last year. This is January 1st, 13, to January 7th, 14. But I think I also had a second sketchbook somewhere in year two, so there isn't as much stuff from early in the year. So at the beginning of that year I was trying to do these anatomy studies. It started out okay and knowing me I got so far in I'm just like why am I doing this? I hate I hate people, I hate anatomy so I just stopped. So there's one failure right away. <laughs> um, here's a really terrible perspective made up world that just I I don't even know what was happening with this? I mean, you know, hold on a second. Let me flip off my lower thirds and get the camera um, back over a second here. Hold on. I gotta do a little maintenance on the thing. Back to that. Hmm? It looks, like, it looks like other people knew Torchwood. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so so apparently apparently Dee Dee isn't going to make it this evening. Uh, that Aww. was forwarded to me, um, unfortunately. But uh, next time around for sure, uh, I imagine. Um, Wait. So people actually knew it before I answered. Um, I think so. But you know, as always, as as always, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> That's a little heartwarming, cause <laughs> for me, anyways. Right. Um. So anyhow, I was showing off the th yeah. <laughs> All right, so I was here, and there's oh there's this other there's this other project over here on the left, but um, and that is a mixed media thing. <laughs> so there's yeah there's this weird perspectivey thing, and I don't know. It was just it was a bad idea to start with. Um, so next up, we've got these, which I think this is like arches, like big rock arches. I maybe a bridge. I'm I'm not entirely sure. I'm really just speculating at this point. I don't know what I was thinking. It was something. <laughs> I was I was certainly thinking something, but I I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know what it was. Um, but it was something. Um, hmm. So next up, this this came. I was halfway through this painting, which is why this is very important to show. So this one thing I was complete concept. This weird staircase, and rocks, and waterfalls, and this the painting for this um, was actually in a video. It was. My second water tutorial about base tones mm. for water, and that's where this painting showed up. And I, at, like, r literally right after that video, I'm like, "This painting sucks. I'm done with it." <laughs> and 
And I don't know what went over top of that canvas, but uh, that one went. This is a good thing. It's like, well, this thing, I made, took it to the concept. I think I, I may have taken this into Photoshop. I'm not sure. But I took it to Canvas, and I started working on it. And I'm like, this is bad. <laughs> this is really, <laughs> really bad. And I just left it at that. And um, I, you know, this is a, a, a failure that sits in the sketchbook, but gladly um, does not exist on Canvas anymore. And the last one I had marked in here was a mess upon a mess. It looks it's kind of cool from here. Brick wall that I started with crazy lines to make shapes, and it probably could have been saved. Um, <laughs> but I just flip the page and move on. It kind of reminds me, unless like the quality of my video thing is horrible. Um, it kind of reminds me of like the second closing theme to the first Full Metal Alchemist anime. See, I would I would have to go back and figure out what all of them are now. But yes, very good series. Oh, wait, you, no, wait, are you talking original series or are you talking Brotherhood? Original series. I actually haven't oh, been able to... Oh, yes, I wouldn't have seen that in a while. Because Brotherhood was better. Mm, I, I'm still working yeah. my way through Brotherhood. Oh, you're, see, I, I've, I've tried to avoid these tan avoid these tangents in, in the, the new series of live shows, but I will say this. Um, if you are into anime, and if you're not, feel free to just disregard this altogether, but uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, aside from being better than the original series, um, by in, in a lot of different reasons. One, because they stuck to the original story, but two, um, because the way it ended, and I won't ruin anything for you, but... Thanks. It's both very satisfying compared to the original series and um, just emotionally gripping. <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that. Mm. I don't know. I was pretty satisfied with the first anime. I'll just say that. And um, I'm not much of an anime person anymore, so that's why I've been like, eh, I can watch Brotherhood later. <laughs> so anyhow... Back to the original topic, which I'm almost through now for the evening. Uh, I do want to check through our hashtag and a little bit of other stuff um, here just before we move on. Um, I think that's everything there. And this page I should reload. Mm -hmm. See, now I made, made the point to have all this stuff over here. I have my second monitor over on the table. I got a mouse over here. I do not have a keyboard over here. <laughs> I could wireless probably put, one. I could, could, I've got a wireless one upstairs on my desktop. Oh, okay. Um, which I could, in theory, bring down here, but just one more thing. I could do the on-screen thing, but it's just all these things kind of coming together and like, yeah, this isn't working and this is working and yeah. And here's the other thing is I just now for the first time in quite a while used the refresh button on my <gasps> web browser because I'm so used to F5. F5, what's that? If nobody knows, what, it's, it's refresh. Oh. If you're on a web page and you hit F5, it's, it refreshes. Wow, you learn something new every day. And I see so you're so you're gonna know that now, and you'll never go back to the refresh button ever again. Well, here's the thing: my computer doesn't have F5, but it has a literal refresh button. Oh, because you're on a little thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. I think we're good now. So anyhow, back to the topic. I think we might have scared a few people away. But that's always quite okay. They can come back in later when there's time codes. Time codes, yes. So, so what we've been doing here, uh, some of what Lucas is doing, some of what I've been doing, and my final tip for this is to show off your failures. Um, it's actually really bad to kind of keep them close and, and not sort of share them with the community. Like, if you have an art community, if not, again, we're here. 
we're, we're, we're the YouTube Bar community. Feel free to, to show us. And, and many of us, you can probably just email and it's like, hey, can you give me some advice? Some, and like, be, be real. And the other thing I think I threw this in at the end of last week's show is if you're going to email an artist you admire, be sincere about it and compose your email and use correct spelling and that kind of stuff just so we don't ignore you right off the bat. And, and we know that you're serious. But also... Um, Getting critiques on the, both the work that you do like and the work that you don't like um, is a huge thing for growth. And whether or not you agree with the critique, actually take the advice that they give you. Or um, whatever. I think there was a third thing I wanted to throw in there, but I don't know what it was. Um, <laughs> but the, the remember, uh, and I think I talked about this last week, either during the show or maybe with you guys on in the after show, or Dee Dee in the after show. Were you in the after show at all? No, my iPad was like on five percent right. power. Yeah, because you ran out at the like one of the towards the end. Yeah. But um, something I brought up during one of them, and if it's in last week's show, it'll be time coded. But um, <laughs> no, I forgot. <laughs> Damn it. It's something. And I and I, I could blame my drink, but it's actually not the drink. It's all me right now. You could have just avoided saying that and said, it's the drink. It's the drink. No, because if I say it's the drink, then I look like a drunk. I don't oh, want to do that. Oh, this is true. And, and this is a public... This is a family-friendly show. Right. But, um... Showing off your failures... Um, but here, I'll just go to right to my next take on, on my notes. Uh, it reminds us... Uh, oh, that's the other thing. Is, is you are not your work. Um, a criticism of your work is not a criticism of you personally. It's not a, and it's not an attack on you as a person. It's just, this is your work, and if you have to be detached from you and your work and all that other stuff. And my other note was, uh, it all of this stuff, being... Uh, uh, failing at, at, at your work and making bad drawings uh, reminds you and, and showing them off reminds everybody that you are not alone in the creative process. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's this a lot of times this mentality that I'm doing this thing and I'm off on my own and, and nobody else understands what I'm doing. It's like There are other artists out there. Uh, the DeviantArt community, while v extremely varied and extremely um, diverse, both in uh, uh, age groups, uh, mentalities, and um, philosophies. Uh, you have a, a group of people that all this. The way I say, look at deviant artists, everybody there has one thing in common: they love art. And if there, and if someone's there that doesn't love art, art, they're a troll. Yeah. <laughs> for la for a lack of better terms. Seen them. But you know, everyone will have that, at least to some degree, some artistic and, and creative process in common, and you can share that, and that is huge. And and you may not realize it uh, all the time, but it is so crucial and important to understanding both your work and other people's work, knowing that you are not alone in a creative process and the creative process. Should be a communal thing. It, it is. It should be collaborative. It should be people throwing ideas back and forth. Uh, because if it's not, um, then I think in a lot of ways it's not a creative process, and instead it's more of a solitary process. I agree. And that's the end of my drink. <laughs> so that was all of my points for today. I don't know if you had anything to, to follow up on any of that. Um, I would like to add that this does not apply to art alone. Well, like, the art that we do, um, this can also apply to, like, writing and to um, music as well, because, like, when you announced the today's topic, I was like, oh, my gosh, I have so much to say about it concerning my past as an English major and how I wanted to go into writing and how, like, two months ago, everything just happened two months ago to me for some reason. <laughs> Um, two months ago, I took on Cthulhu. <laughs> um, no, like, two months ago, I wrestled a dragon to the ground and beat it with my bare hands. I mean, uh, topic. Um, what was I going to say? Um, I had sold 
my first painting like that was over thirty dollars. It was forty five dollars. <laughs> and um, oh, one of maybe my so um, one of my closest friends is like, "Don't let's go to your head. Don't let this go to your head." And I was like, "What do you mean? What do you mean?" Because like he was he is a musician and um, it did not work out for him so well. Like he loves being a musician, but he's always saying, "Don't let this go to your head, please. You cannot make a living off of this." And like. Add us up and say, "What's my degree?" Yeah, there's um, <clears throat> actually I have another, a, a friend of mine that uh, was in uh, a band like throughout high school and 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 over the past few years, as well, and uh, they recently had a bit of a falling out, and uh, it's really sad because they they um. Okay, they were sort of all, he was like making steps to try and push their stuff forward, and I was talking to him one night, and he said, "You can only do so many shows," and I'm like. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, don't you love to play music? You know, and, and my concern, and I haven't really talked to him that much about it, but my biggest concern, is, and what I want to talk to him further about, is, is why do you do what you do? Yeah. Are you doing it because you love to make music? And if you love to make music, if you feel like nothing uh, more than like I have to write music, I have to to write and and, and play songs, then a good audience or a bad audience, that shouldn't bother you at all. You know, there's... For, for me, and I, I think we talked about this a little bit uh, last week, is uh, for me, art is my way of understanding the world. And I think you kind of agreed uh, in, mm -hmm. in that sense. And there is... For some reason, artists, that, uh, both visual and musicians and, and writers, that do what they do just... For their audience and not like at all for themselves, to me is somebody that is troubled, and it seems weird. Like it sounds kind of weird, but in a lot of ways, as a, somebody who creates, you have to be a little bit more self-centered. <laughs> you have yeah. to do you have to do things for yourself because you enjoy them. And if you can't yeah. enjoy what you're doing, then other people won't enjoy what you're doing. Um, that sounds like something, something totally Bob Ross would say right now. <laughs> wow. I feel special now. <laughs> well, both of you have a... Well, you've told me that you got inspired into painting because of Bob Ross, so... Yes, I did. Um, um, and Bob I, Ross I like is him. awesome. To, to me, he's, he's the reason that I'm a landscape painter, <laughs> as I think I kind of have said a few times, but... Um, um, but yeah, so I think that's sort of wrapping up the main section of the show. I just want to say, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about, and then we'll probably do an after show again today. Um, but uh, yeah, that's in in short, that is how to fail like an artist. Yeah, is quite literally do your best. When you don't, don't hold it against yourself. And just move on. Um, so yeah, I guess just that just about sums it up. So oh. I think did you did you finish everything you wanted to bring up? Yeah, I, you know, like there was like I was like debating whether or not to bring up my the slightly more detailed version of my past as an English major. I'm like, nah, that's too sad. Ain't too sad. <laughs> we'll save that for another day of. What? Annoyingness. So we'll save that for another day. <laughs> yeah, we can. Oh, so. there's actually a drink that I want to import called Writer's Tears. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you say in, do you want to invent it? No, import it. It's um I think it's from import Ireland. It. Oh. Interesting. Okay, so I'm uh, pointing the camera on me for a while. Um Are you still alive? Kind of yeah, we are. So oh. I'm gonna wrap this up as long as we are still alive. Um, so thanks everyone for tuning in who did uh, for those of you that happen to have missed it um, and have gotten this far into the hangout um, <laughs> and, and not looked in the description box I prob will probably have the time codes up uh, within the week uh, as long as I do it um, within the first couple days uh, of the hangout and the hangout isn't like two hours or longer then I can usually get the time codes up and, uh, and that's one of my things with the, the new series of live shows is that I can keep them shorter and, and get the time codes up in a, a reasonable reasonable amount of time. So 
In case you missed anything, time codes will be in the description box below, along with um, probably some other cool stuff, uh, whatever I can think of. Uh, if there's anything else, then yeah, it'll be in the description box. Mm -hmm. So thank you to Lucas, who I'm going to go ahead and point over my shoulder. I don't know why. I think that's because where that's where my laptop is. And um, his channel is Apology89 here on YouTube. Thanks to him for joining. Thanks to Dee Dee and uh, her audience from Ustream uh, bringing in uh, a few extra views and a few extra subscribers this recent uh, today. Uh, so thanks to all of you uh, new subscribers, old subscribers, uh, the entire YouTube art community. Uh, and at this, uh, I think that's everything. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, okay. And, and at this, be sure to be sure to subscribe to this channel uh, if you are not already for more art videos and live shows. Uh, this has been from DMC Films and Cinema Block Studios. See you guys next time. And I don't have to run over here and put the thing on the...